My wife has been experimenting with making soap. Pretty cool. One of her friends got her a soap making kit, and it came with all this stuff, the stuff you melt in a pot, and then these little bottles of essential oils that you put drops of it in, and it makes the soap smelly. Different ones, like lavender and orange and tea tree and all this stuff. Essential oils are pretty big these days. Have you noticed that? They're, they're popping up everywhere. They're in everything. Before you know it, Apple Jacks is going to be like, new improved Apple Jacks with real essential oil of apple. Essential oils. They're everywhere. Well, we're going to pick up our story in the Song of Solomon today and have a little discussion of essential oils. But before we do, I want to point something out that I neglected to draw attention to yesterday. So yesterday, we started the story with the bride coming out on the scene and speaking to someone, asking someone to let her beloved come and kiss her. And we talked about how I think that's the father, that he's the only one that has authority to allow Jesus to come to us and touch us with his word in a way that affects every aspect of our being, our thoughts, our emotions, the very direction of our lives and even our bodies. And then something happened halfway through that verse. She, she said, for your love is better than wine. She switched who she was talking to. First she was talking to someone who would have authority to let her beloved come to her, and then she focuses her attention on her beloved, for your love is better than wine. And she continues today in verse 3, Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 3, she continues to speak to her beloved and say, your oils have a pleasing fragrance. Your name is like purified oil. Therefore, the maidens love you. What's this oily stuff? What's all this greasiness going on here? Well, think about it. Oils, just like we talked about in the beginning here. Essential oils having the very essence of the thing. If it's lavender, it, those oils carry the concentrated essence of what lavender is, what it smells like, its beneficial qualities. And here she's saying, your essence, Jesus, my beloved, is pleasing. When we boil Jesus down, if that were even possible, to his essence, who he is, he is pleasing. He is. He brings pleasure to our being, to the human being. He is the ultimate pleasure. We were designed to be pleased by God. We really were. You know that you are hungry for pleasure. You know that. You don't need me to tell you that. It was built into you by the God of pleasure, who is the God of the universe. And he has given himself to us in Jesus Christ to be the ultimate satisfaction of all of our desires. And she, this, this bride, she knows that. Jesus, your essence, brings me pleasure when I smell it, when I experience it. Isn't that the truth? When we experience Jesus, ah, oh, he pleases us. She says, your name is like purified oil. So think about a name now. Just like oil is the essence of a substance, a name is about who somebody is. It's about their essence. It's about their being, especially Jesus. Jesus, he was named Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All the names that are given to Jesus have meaning. They carry something and communicate something about who he is. And she's saying, your name, Jesus, who you are, is like purified oil. Now, interesting thing about purified oil that term purified could also be translated, listen, oil which is emptied from one vessel into another. 
I believe that has something to do with the purification process, that they would pour the oil from one vessel to another in order to strain out the impurities. Think about that. Jesus, one, he's pure. He is pure. There is no spot in him. His heart is good through and through. Truly, he never sinned. He is pure. His love for us is pure. And beyond that, Jesus, who he is, is poured out. He's not bottled up. He's not kept all to himself. Even the Father did not keep Jesus to himself, but poured him out for you and for me. Jesus does not keep himself to himself. He gives himself to us. He pours himself out fully for us. Who he is, is like oil poured out for us to enjoy. Think about Mary when she broke that alabaster box and poured out the oil and everyone in the house could smell the fragrance. Everyone could enjoy it. That's who Jesus is. Jesus is God, broken, poured out, so that everyone in the world has access to him and to his enjoyment. Everyone can enjoy God now because of who Jesus is. Ah, it's awesome. And she says, therefore the maidens love you. That's why people love you, Jesus, because you poured yourself out, because you gave yourself to us. That's why we can love God. We can only love God because God gave himself to us. Because he first loved us. He's poured out for us so we can love him. Ah, awesome. So today, may you experience the essence of who Jesus is. May it please your soul. And may who he is be poured out for you. Feast upon who he is and let love arise from your heart in response to him.